Let's talk about a couple of things that stand in the way of a lot of people getting what they want. Uh, the number one thing that is going to prevent you is fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown. Fear of failure is probably uh, the number one reason most businesses or entrepreneurs fail. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to fail. What if I put all my money into this business and all my hard work and my blood, sweat, and tears and I lose it? What am I going to do? I'm afraid. That's okay. Fear is healthy. Fear causes you to make wise decisions. But don't let the fear of failure prevent you from doing anything. You heard the saying, the worst that can happen is they say no. Okay, well in, the, in this case, the worst that can happen, you can lose your house. But hey, come on. There's lots of houses out there. All right? So don't let the fear of failure eat you or eat at you, or prevent you from doing things. Some of the biggest well-known entrepreneurs ever have failed many times. Who has, uh, who's heard of Milton Hershey? Hershey candies, you know those little Hershey kisses? They sell a bazillion of them a minute. Half of them go to my house, right? Milton Hershey failed, went bankrupt, lost everything he had four times before his candy business took off. He did not give up. Right? Uh, Henry Ford. Heard of Henry Ford? Donald Trump? George Foreman. He's worth a billion dollars selling grills. The guy is brilliant. Larry King. My personal favorite, MC Hammer. Who knows who MC Hammer is? MC Hammer earned and went through $50 million in about two years. Did he give up? He's back. MC Hammer, when the IRS came out to repossess his Lamborghini Lou, he goes, can't touch this. <laughs> Ow! That really hurt. <laughs> Note to self, no more MC Hammer dancing. Who knows who Walt Disney is? Heard of Walt Disney? Twice? Walt Disney went bankrupt twice. Walt Disney not only had money problems, he had people who wouldn't even hire him. A young Walt Disney applied for a job as a reporter at a newspaper and was told that he lacked imagination. <laughs> yeah, who would thunk it? Uh, the city of Anaheim, California, where was it Disney World, Disneyland is located in California, uh, they were not going to give him a license to open Disneyland because they said it would attract riffraff. And if you've ever been there, you'll know they were right. <laughs> okay. The point of that is, don't give up. <coughs> Failing is going to happen. Failure is going to happen. Failing is easy. It's the easiest thing you could do. But don't let the fear of failure stop you from trying. The other thing is the fear of success. I know people who are actually afraid to try because they don't know. Well, if this works and I get this money, I'm just. We have a word for those folks. We call them idiots. <laughs> okay. If you are afraid of success, I don't know what you're doing here this morning. But a lot of people are. Have you ever known anyone who would torpedo themselves? They would not let themselves be happy? I know a lot of people like that. It's really a sad, sad thing. They just need some counseling. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about reverse motivation. Have you ever been motivated reversely? I have. Tell you a really quick story. When I worked for the Boeing company very uh, about 30 years ago, I was a young man, 21, 22. Uh, I was what they would call now an intrapreneur. An intrapreneur is an entrepreneur who thinks like a business person, but they do it on behalf of the company they work for. All right? They are entrepreneurs who work for your company, and I was always like that. I, I have a very creative background, designer. Uh, and I was always going into my boss with these ideas about things we could do. And, you know, my boss, he would listen, he, you know, and they didn't always take my suggestions, and that was okay. But he listened. Well, I got transferred to a new department, to a new boss, and his name was Jim. And Jim had been with the Boeing Company, you know, since day two. His badge was done in crayon. He was old as Methuselah. I could go on, but you get the point. Right. Jim did not want to hear anything I had to say. I would go into Jim's office, and I would say, hey, Jim, I got an idea. And I would start rattling off something. And Jim would steeple his fingers, and he'd close his eyes, and he'd start doing this. And I thought, hey, he's thinking. 
No, he was going to sleep. <laughs> True. And finally one day Jim said to me, look, Knox, yeah, I'm, I'm like this kid's age. Like, I appreciate your enthusiasm. That's, I don't want to hear anything you have to say. I want you to come in at 8 o'clock in the morning, leave at 5 o'clock, just do your job. Do you need a job description? Here's a copy of your job description. Okay. It was like you deflated my balloon. Okay. He looked at me and he says, Knox, your problem is you think too much. <laughs> now, this was a, a new thread in the Knox fabric. <laughs> I, I had never been accused of thinking too much. My wife would tell you, I barely think at all most days. But I'm making my way back to my offices and now I'm going, I start to think. I start thinking, well, you know, maybe he's right. Maybe I do think too much. You know, maybe, uh, I think maybe I might want to leave this place. And I had always been entrepreneurial. I always had side jobs, side businesses. So I started thinking about starting my own business. And this was my very first business, a graphic design company. And I had been doing it on the side. And I finally decided I'm going to break out and I'm going to do it full time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I go back <clears throat> into Jim's office about two months later, and I sit down, and he's like, immediately, look, I don't want to hear it. We've already had this conversation. Just do your job. And I said, Jim, you'll be happy to know I am not here to give you an idea. I am here to turn in my two weeks' notice. I'm going to start my own business. And Jim says, well, I think you're nuts. And I said, Jim, you think too much. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Now, think about this. Think about it. If I had listened to Jim, where would I be today? Dead. Dead. Uh, I'd be sitting at the Boeing Company with cobwebs on me, right? So in a way, I owe everything that I've been able to do to Jim and his reverse motivation. So when there are people out there telling you that you can't do things, just smile. There is nothing more satisfying than being able to say, I told you so. My wife is the most satisfied woman in the world. I told you so. 